Back in an interview with Sahara TV, you had stated emphatically that there will be no elections in Nigeria come 2023. Is there a basis for optimism at this time, considering the fact that political campaigns have commenced and INEX seems to be sticking to its timetable? Or do you still feel there is no change in that direct tra tra trajectory, sir? Uh, well, um, uh, uh, I think the change we are seeing is. Uh, it's just a facade. Uh, the fundamentals are there. And um, uh, nothing has changed in terms of those fundamentals. Now, I started by explaining to you that I uh, did not come to that conclusion that there may be no elections just by accident. I actually took you through theoretical principles that had dictated this. I started then by referring you to Thomas Hobbes in his Leviathan. I mean, who I mean, described critically that in any state where such insecurity is the order of the day, where, uh, I mean, uh, society is living as if we are in the state of nature, where might was right, where, I mean, there is no authority, where the, the, the lives and properties of the, of the society, of the, of the individual society cannot be protected. He did say very clearly in the Leviathan that such a state, even commerce is impossible in such a state. Progress is impossible. Development is impossible in such a state. And that is why, I mean, society came together to invest their inalienable rights on a leadership so that they can protect the society. So now, if we translate that into the Nigerian situation, what I'm saying in effect is that the indices as dictated by Thomas Hobbes in his Leviathan are all over the place. Insecurity, I mean, uh, the instinct, the first instinct is self-preservation. Every man wants to protect himself. He wants to live. And if there are threats to your life and property all over the place, you cannot travel freely. How are they going to move ballot papers from place to place? What about the security of the lives of those I mean, call young coppers and uh, uh, academics, I mean, uh, top brains in the country that might end up being, I mean, do you know that those people uh, call them bandits, call them Boko Haram, call them uh, so, I mean, uh, whatever it name you call them, they are all over the place, also planning their own strategy because they know that they, they are, I mean, they have, they have a free day in Nigeria. They are unable, nobody can curtail them. They do these things and get away with it, and nobody says anything. And no one is holding anybody accountable for anything. We only pay lip service to these things and we forget them. The, the, the train crisis, I mean, the, the, the attack on the train, yeah. they carted people away. The president never went there. I mean, nobody did anything. On uh, Kaduna uh, Abuja Road, they kidnap people every day. They come into the road and take people the same manner. Nothing. The tactics has not changed. They, but, they but, ask for ransom. But, but, most every of those, day. doctor, most of those that have that, that were kidnapped uh, during the Abuja train uh, uh, saga uh, had been freed, and um, the the government is talking about reopening the Abuja uh, trade uh, Kaduna train station. I mean, uh, isn't that a cause for optimism? Really. They have been uh, are released. How? Be, what do you? That is the problem. Do you know what the state had made those businesses lucrative? It is now a business. Do you understand? Now it is more lucrative to get it. Nobody thinks about armed robbery anymore because it's not as lucrative as this. They will tell the government to. I've never seen in any part of the world where government assists in giving and uh, awesome. individuals and whatever assists in giving ransom to bandits. Right? Rather than, I mean, attacking them full heart. No, they won't. I mean, so you see, it gives credence, it lends credence to the uh, um, uh, to the conspiracy theory that there are, I mean, infiltrators within and that even people in government have a hand in what we are talking about, that it doesn't seem, uh, because people know them, they give them money, they go to dis discuss with them, and then on social media, you find pictures 
of guns and ammunitions. All so if they are invisible, how do we have access to all this? And in modern technology, drones, they know where they are. I mean, Gumi said it. I mean, they're going go to discuss with them. So if really we are interested in putting an end to this insecurity, what we could have done is to deal with it, right? Uh, Papa Aolo said, you don't fight the effect in order to cure the cause. He said, you only fight the cause in order to cure the effect. All you are seeing are, are, are just cosmetics. We are trying to fight the effect in order to cure the cause. When we should actually be attacking the cause, it's, it's, uh, I find I would be surprised if successful election takes place, except, I mean, uh, if they have paid enough money to all the bandits, all the various sections of the bandits and all that, and uh, giving them more enough money for them to stay out of, I mean, uh, the place. But I don't know how it's going to happen. So I, I can't see any optimism. It, the, the, there's a lot going to go around. People who will have to travel by road, by canoe, and all that, then people will come out of their homes to vote. When there is a gunshot, just one, two, three gunshots, nobody will come and vote. They will just package whatever it is. I mean, in those places, what is the ratio of the security we have to the citizens we have? United Nations recommend uh, 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 1,004 to uh, 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 one. Uh, this is, we have, I mean, less, much, much more higher than that. We have over 1,006 to one I mean, po po policeman. And that is not all. We have more of these policemen deployed to individual homes, uh, pre uh, senior uh, officials, and all watching all over. So the rest of us don't have enough to go around. So how exactly do you think we can, I mean, cross all this and have an election? That's the problem. Doctor, you've actually paint, paint, painted a very grim picture as far as that uh, the, the coming elections is concerned. But we've seen politicians uh, and the presidential candidates crisscrossing the nation at the moment and are campaigning. Uh, I mean, doesn't that make a statement that uh, there might be a process of uh, going through this system? Uh, well, you, you see, uh, uh, when politicians are going around this, they have, uh, they have loads of security men. They have, I mean, you and I don't have the security apparatus that they have exactly. to move around. They have security soldiers and um, I mean, men to protect them. They have, uh, uh, I mean, private guards and I mean, and all that. These are not the times they strike. They strike when the common man is going on this on on I mean, on his own daily activities. So you are likely to find them moving, I mean, but that is not to say that you will not find such occasional attacks. It's been happening, or where even the convoys of certain when they know that, okay, they can get away with it, they strike if they think that they have a superior power, which they have actually been demonstrating. They show us on the social media demonstrating their might, and I mean, in this, and there is a state. It's ridiculous. Now, Doctor, you, yeah. earlier on you stated that you will be surprised if there is going to be an election come 2023. Let's yeah. assume that there is going to be an election come 2023. And yes. Nigerians are hoping to make a statement with their votes in this 2023 uh, general elections. Do you yeah. expect INEC to conduct a free and fair election? Well, um, it's a... It's, uh, uh, difficult. Uh, it's it's very difficult to say pre precisely because um, uh, uh, um, uh, the, the, the the narratives may go beyond them. The powers they are fighting may go beyond them. You see, uh, we have institutionalized corruption. It's a way of life now. We have deliberately improvised the society uh, in, 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 in such a manner that uh, uh, it is so difficult uh, to get people who will stand and be above board. Those who 
few people who try to stand and be above board end up being like orphans in Ayukwe Amas, beautiful ones are not yet born. Go ahead, please, doctor. Yeah. In Ayukwe Amas, beautiful ones are not yet born. Where the man, the only man who is sane, who chooses not to get involved in the whole mess of corruption, become isolated. He becomes the only one that seems to be doing the wrong thing, when in actual fact, he's actually the only person that is sane. So he becomes the insane personality in, 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 in that world. So there are so much pressure because there will be financial uh, uh, inducements, there will, be, uh, 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 there, there, there will be threats to life because nobody, uh, uh, in Nigeria, uh, people are killed and nobody do, does anything to it. Till today that I'm talking to you, nobody has been able to fish out who killed Elegiwa. Nobody has been able to fish out who killed the Attorney General of the Federation, Bolaigi. Nobody has been able to fish who killed Pariwani. These people were not killed by spirits. These were even in the days when we are not talking about kidnappers. So, I mean, there are threats, there will be threats to life. You understand? If you don't compromise, then this is what happens. And the people who are, in, who are there have what it takes to achieve, I mean, uh, uh, all this. If you cannot be induced, then you can be taken away. Okay? And uh, sufficiently, I mean, people will come with um, embarrassing kind of uh, money figures that they would make it look like, I mean, you, you can't claim to be the only uh, Puritan in the entire world. Yeah, yeah let, exa exactly. Let, let, let me also get your perspective, I mean, really on that, because now we are beginning to see uh, a, 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 a measure of, I mean, a, a glimpse of the plans of especially the major political parties who plans to win uh, elections the same way every uh, of their politicians have won. Uh, they convince local politicians to deliver their states, and those politicians then use their grassroots allies to win the local uh, votes. Uh, do you think there is an effective strategy to neutralize this? And uh, there are fears in some quarters that vote by might negatively impact the election. What is your take on this, sir? Um, look where you are right. You see, let me explain this to you. Uh, uh, the Nigerian society, as it is right now, uh, uh, if you believe me, I'll tell you that uh, we don't have a Nigerian agenda. We don't have a Nigerian agenda. We only have sectional agendas. And that will take us back a little bit, you understand, to how, I mean, with all this even started, which is back, tracing back to uh, the, the amalgamation in the first place. You see, all attempts in this country to break Nigeria from beyond the West, East, and North, I mean, thing, into six geopolitical zones, into 12 states by Goan, into 13 states, into uh, 20 whatever states, Babangida, et cetera, were all attempts at obliterating the fact mm. that uh, we are these individual nations within the country. There may be a different uh, a tribal and ethnic differences within various, I mean, I mean uh, nations, but these are, there are still affinity within those I mean, nations that they can relate to. The Edo's, for instance, in, in Benin, the Edo's and the Yorubas, they see themselves as part of the same Yoruba or Dutua, I mean, uh, origin. So there could be, and they don't speak the same language. language. So there is affinity um, in this different area. So all we have been trying to do to create uh, zones and states and break up, we to just, uh, uh, obliterate these facts that we are more than we are we are not these three different uh, I mean sections and so coming back to the issue of the elections you find out that uh, 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 the elections uh, uh, as it is right now it is purely if we look at Obi Tinubu and Atiku they are like 
uh, the triumvirates representing the Hausa, the Igbo, and the Yoruba race. Every other thing is speaking to that narrative. Hmm. So there is no Nigerian agenda. Now, if there is a Nigerian agenda, then the Nigerian agenda, now let me quickly say this before I go on, that if there is a Nigerian agenda, believe me honestly, let me just give you only one example in the past. Now, and then I'll continue. If there is a Nigerian agenda by anybody, one man will not wake up one day and say, uh, and go on TV to say, I annul an election that is popularly voted by both the North, the South, and the East all together and say that, uh, and nothing happens. And I mean, I mean, a revolutionary reaction did not happen. The narrative now changed to make it, well, is a, a Southwest affair. And that was how June 12th was forgotten. But if there is a Nigerian agenda, do you understand? If there is a Nigerian agenda, then the Northerners will come out to say, uh, Mr. President, you, you may be a Northerner. We don't care. This is what we united and decided to do together as a people. This is what we want. And the Easterners too will stand and say, look, it doesn't have to be an Igbo man. We all decided that this is what we want. But because, I mean, the narrative changed and they reminded them that what your fathers had achieved by military conquest, I will achieve it by political power. Hmm. So, and they reminded them that, look, you are born to rule. All this narrative is intended to protect you and your great grandchildren. Because if this social person comes into power, then we are no longer talking and everybody had to abandon it. Hmm. So the June 12th was abandoned because it was reduced from a Nigerian agenda to a sectional agenda. So let me come back to what I'm saying. Now, you find out that each of the, the political groups as it is right now are only, pro are only projecting a tribal or sectional agenda. A milokon is a philosophy of Western orientation of, I mean, the West, I'm talking about Southwest, is telling you that, look, ultimately, whatever you are saying, I'm a Yoruba man, and you must feel behind me now. I mean, Atiku 2 was reported to have, I mean, have been criticized for going to make, I mean, statements at the campaign where he, I mean, also projected this same kind of ideology that, look, you guys are Hausa and Muslims like me. You have to, I mean, support me, okay? And uh, Obi, whether he had, I mean, uh, skillfully tried to, I mean, uh, go get out of that, um, ov I mean, uh, overtly, you find out that uh, there are still elements and links, both from his supporters and whatever, who are saying, look, it is the time, it's the next turn of the Igbo man. The Igbo man has been marginalized. He has been this, he has been that. What are we saying? We are purely, I mean, on this. So the truth I am saying to you is that uh, they may be presenting all this and pretending that there is a Nigeria. In all honesty, I do not think that there is a Nigerian agenda yet. So for clarity's sake, sir, yes. Dr. J. Yes. Uh, are you insinuating yeah. that the campaign process, which is under yeah. normal circumstances, supposed to be uh, in many ways a referendum of the performance of the ruling party, uh, will the decision of the electorate, uh, instead of being anchored around manifestos and promises, will more or less, it's more or less like ethnic and religious considerations where they can, will be taken center stage. Is, is that what you are alluding to, sir? That's exactly what it is. The very few people, the, the, interestingly, it is only in the Southwest that interestingly that you find people who have the Nigerian agenda in them. Who will say clearly that listen, you are a Yoruba man and I'm a Yoruba man, but I'm not going to support you. Just because like I've, just I think, like what Afeni Ferry is actually doing now. Oh Ferry. yes, I, I, um, yeah. That I mean, you are a Yoruba man. I'm a Yoruba man, but I'm not going to support you on the basis of dialectics and the principles on, the, on my palm. I am not supporting you because this. I mean, I think there is a better candidate than you. Is it? I mean, this for X, Y, Z reasons. It's only in the southwest you find such a thing. Okay, but in the north, I mean, the people are 
uh, I mean, I mean, will not. They are not interested in whether this person is better. He's an outside man. He's a, he's a Muslim. That's enough criteria. Hmm. In the in the Igbo land, okay, he's an Igbo man. Okay, he, he, he's he's a he's an he's an Igbo man. An Igbo man, he, originally, a Igbo man uh, uh, will not leave his brother and support you, even hmm. if he knows that you are a better candidate. He will not do it. The only reason, only one reason why an able man would leave his brother and support you is because either there is money involved and the money must be very good, if I'm quoting one of my friends. So, okay, uh, now, uh, okay, so, go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, in the Southwest, you understand, people can be critical and say, I mean, or that, but it's only an infinitesimal number. The large proportion of the society, you understand, are still going to go on that ethnic I mean, uh, 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 and religious sentiment. Why did you think the, the APC decided to choose uh, I mean, a, a Muslim, 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 Muslim ticket? ticket. Hmm. Now, let me quickly tell you this. Do you know that uh, Buhari's regime is the only, is the regime that has the greatest uh, marginalization of Muslim Christians, where there were the greatest number of uh, attack on Christians and and whatever, and this is the regime where we have a pastor who is a professor and a, a member uh, of Redeem, one of the leading uh, Christian organizations in the country or in the world, if you like. You understand? This is where where he is second. I mean, uh, second in command. So it means that choosing a Christian a Christian ticket or a Christian Muslim ticket is insignificant. It cannot make any impact. If he did not do in the time of Osibadu, if he could not make any, I mean, difference, then putting any Christian is just a mere paper tiger. It mm. doesn't make any difference. And the reason why the APC must have decided to choose a Muslim Muslim ticket is because they have sat down to understand the narrative that in the north, the basic criteria to win an election is you are either a Muslim and a Muslim um, and a and a and a house of Fulani. So if you are not a Muslim and you are not, I mean, because the Christians, they are a minority. Hmm. Okay, so if you are not, and then they have to go to what you call opportunity cost. They have to forego one alternative. And the decision was, okay, I mean, do we take the majority who will vote for us because of their religion? And I mean, uh, uh, and uh, okay, as what you can be sold to them, he's a Muslim. Even though he's a Christian and he's a, uh, he's a Southerner, but uh, uh, I mean, he has uh, somebody who is also a Muslim with him. So they are capitalizing on the fact that there is a majority they can get from the North. They can, they are, for, they are willing to lose the Christians over there and get the, the, the permutation and get the uh, Muslims there. And of course, the democracy is a game of number. So if we can capture the majority, that's all we need. We don't have to take everybody along. And let me even tell you this, like I said, is that it doesn't matter who, I mean, the constitution does not give any power to the vice president to the extent to which he can make influence anybody, I mean, make any major impact. He's just there like a figurehead. He's, hmm. as, he's, he does what he's told. Okay. So uh, whether he's a Muslim, Muslim ticket, or whatever, Christians are only deceiving themselves to think that uh, because there is a pastor or a Muslim, a Christian there, and therefore they are represented. No, the issues are there. Now, I mean, you know, no, who, no, for no, instance, no. Is, married, is married to somebody who is also a pastor in Redeem. Let me tell you this. In the South, religion does not play any role in whatever, so we are not bothered. If you like, you can be uh, a, a, an atheist. It doesn't make any difference, I mean, to us. Uh, whoever, whether Jack and they was a Muslim or not, Lagosians were not interested. Whether Fasola was a Christian or a Muslim, Lagosians were not interested. Okay, so I mean, but in the north, it's a different ball game. The religion is pri primary. You must be a Muslim, okay, apart from being in House of Fulani. But then, in the in in the south, the contrary is the, is the case. In the south, people can kill you because you are in a different party. You are not in the party that everybody is supporting. They can burn your house and do all that. 
but they are not bothered about your religion. But in the north, it's not so. In a family, they will pick three people and say, okay, you go to APC, you go to, uh, uh, I mean, uh, um, uh, uh, PDP, you go to, I mean, AD or whatever. And whoever succeeds in coming to power should bring the booty home so that we all share. That is the narrative. So now, they <laughs> understood this. And that is why, I mean, the trend is going the way it is. I don't see anything different. Now, do Doctor, I mean, yeah. what's the way forward out of this? Uh, consider the fact now that we are even seeing more youth participation. The youths are really serious. Uh, uh, they seem to be very serious about participating in the, elect in, in, in the next elections. And considering uh, the glimpses we are beginning to see, uh, the cycle of uh, uh, the nonchalant attitude of uh, these major political parties, especially with regards to addressing Nigerians. Uh, we, we see recently one of the issues that has been in the front burner in recent time is uh, the non-appearance of some of these uh, uh, major political parties, uh, like for example, APC uh, and the PDP, out there debating uh, at some of these uh, town hall sessions that uh, are, are ongoing. I mean, it, it, it's a slap on Nigerians uh, that they are, they are not addressing Nigerians, they are not addressing issues, and they are not even ready for debate. They are sat, uh, they've sat back and they are co completely relaxed, knowing that they are confident uh, of, of coming out on top. So, uh, and do, do you see anything, a, a way forward out of this uh, quagmire that we are in? Uh, Tope, you know what? Do you know why you are saying that? They understood very clearly that uh, coming out to such debates would expose them more, would show more of their inadequacies. You understand? I mean, Obi, Obi seemed to have a, a, an upper hand because he's more eloquent, even though with his shrill voice, he's more able to engage is a younger, I mean, uh, personality and able to identify with the, I mean, youths. So he has a higher advantage. And so in order to cover up their tracks, uh, cover up their inadequacies and expose less of their uh, I mean, inadequacies to the public, of course, they will not come out. <laughs> but beyond that is the fact that they also understood how they are going to capture elections. They know that elections are not won on the social media. Exactly. So, 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 so doctor, I, 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 only, we, we, I appreciate that, 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 that your thoughts there. The question now is what effective strategy should, I mean, Nigerian youths and, and the Nigerian people adopt at this point in time to neutralize the, the, this? It's, it's a very difficult one. Do you know why? Why? Um, the strategies that the older generations are going to use, you understand, is the same strategy that is based on the impoverishment of the society yeah. and the fact that our leaders are not accountable to us. Yeah. You understand? Once they, they tell you that once they are voted in, you can't see them anymore. Exactly. You can't have a chance to express your opinion. You can't say they should remove them. So they tell you that the only opportunity they have now is to live in today. Hmm. So when they come in and they, you are somebody who is hungry, there is, the state has no plan to give people who are, who, who are homeless any home to sleep. Hmm. The state has no plan to give people who are hungry food to eat. There are no food banks hmm. like we have in the UK. The state is not ready to give, I mean, money that will keep up those who are unemployed. I mean, the, the, the downtrodden, nothing is there to take care of them. Hmm. So when somebody comes and he comes to speak grammar and another person comes and say, listen, this is money. Hmm. All I need for you is go and vote for me. The hmm. person will take money and say, listen, I will, all these politicians, we don't see them anymore after hmm. this. Let me get what I can get today, and then they must get their future. Mm. You understand? So they take that immediate gratification and sell their birthright. Okay, this vote buying thing cannot stop. Mm. How did the all the, the people who got into I mean, uh, who got the nomination in the various uh, parties? How did they get in there? 
you yeah. and I know, it is still the same buying. You understand? People were bought. Not only were delegates bought, even contestants were bought. Okay? And I mean, and then the result is that, I mean, uh, these are th this, the people who are there they, they have enough money to throw around. They have enough money that has been budgeted for this. And do you know what? Do you think that uh, we're talking about youths, youths? Do you think that the people that the old cargo people are using, are they old people? Yeah, of course, the young ones. The youths. They are also youths. <laughs> you understand? So they are also youths. So there's a divided class. Okay? They, they, they are youths. But they have been able to explore what they have been denied mm. by the state. They are right that they have been denied, they're working on it. Hmm. And so for a hungry man who got a few, I mean, currencies to just keep himself alive for a few, he would go that way. Okay? So it's a difficult thing. I, I'm, I, 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 I'm not willing to just brandish theories and just pretend that it's going to be easy. No. But Nigerians can do something for themselves. Exactly. To recognize that uh, the best they can to recognize if elections will be held fair, I mean, fairly. If, uh, uh, because you see, when the parties are planning, they have multifaceted dimensions of the plans to manipulate. Okay. If we cannot do the manipulation at the polling booth, we can do it after, I mean, uh, the, the polling booth. centers. <laughs> yeah, the coalition centers. If we cannot do it, at the collation center, we can do it at the point of announcement. Hmm. If we cannot do it, I mean, so there are, if we cannot do it to disenfranchise certain people or to bring commotion into certain people and prevent, I mean, uh, cause upheaval here hmm. and there to, uh, I mean, uh, to, to disenfranchise certain people so that we can achieve. So there are all plans. And then if we cannot do that, if we have to induce people with money at various places. So the plans are all together. They will, all of them are all in place. Hmm. If one fails, the other one will be there. The extent to which one succeeds, it's, that's how it is. And so what Nigerians can do is uh, not to just pay lip service to their demands. There is no guarantee, believe me, that OB is going to be anything fantastically different from what the other people have, because he is also a product of that class. You understand? He is only different in terms of degrees. He is about the same thing. He's only different in terms of degrees. And again, let me say this to you, that uh, his difference is also dependent on the limit of the opportunities that he had to, I mean, soil his hands sufficiently as the other two that are, I mean, in front of him. If he had the same level of equal opportunities, not because he is governor and Tinubu is governor, no. Tinubu had more access, more empire, more tentacles than he'll be to soil his hands. Atiku had more opportunities and more, I mean, chances to soil his hands than he'll be. The limit of the soiling of hands that will be had is limited to the opportunities that he had. So it's not as if Obi himself is a saint brought from, uh, I mean, from some apocalyptic uh, structure somewhere. No. So there's no guarantee that Obi himself is going to uh, be much more different, that we are really going to get anything substantially called change. But you see, let me say this to you. Dialectics has a way of catching up with us. Life is emotion. Heraclitus confirmed this in ancient Greek, that, I mean, um, life continuously is in motion and things will continue to change. The only thing that is, I mean, real is change in life. And when we talk about dialectics, I mean, dialectics uh, is when there is a thesis, there is an antithesis, and then there is a synthesis. Now, in any given society, 
there is a structure that comes. That structure will, will create its own opposites that will attack that structure, the opposite of those things that will attack the structure. That's the antithesis. Now, when the structure is attacked and there is so much antithesis, now this structure will conflict with itself and it will resolve itself ultimately in a synthesis, okay, that will be a better than what the original thesis was. And so this synthesis will form itself into another thesis that will continue in that, I mean, direction. So if we are in this now, going through all the troubles that Nigerians have gone through, okay, with this leadership, the current leadership is the thesis. The antithesis are all the troubles, insecurity, uh, I mean, economic depression, hunger, and all that. All those things are the antithesis that is coming together to clash against the structure, which is now producing a new synthesis where youths are coming up individually to say, no, we cannot continue this way. Okay, so this synthesis, if it is, I mean, properly engineered and pushed, I mean, uh, sufficiently, okay, it will result in a, in a better thesis than the original thesis we have. But it may not be, I mean, uh, and it, it may not be total, uh, 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 what do you call it? It, it, it? it may not be excellent yet, but we are still in the process of becoming, in the process of, I mean, of transforming. So uh, I, I am particularly happy that people who have been apolitical before, who are not interested in what is, have been forced by the structure to become interested in what is going on. So we are hoping that people will get into, I mean, uh, 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 the, will, will move beyond the social media, stand by what they believe, act according to their conscience, okay, and vote appropriately. But again, we're also hoping that Obi would also, if he tells his own way, will not go on by, I mean, um, thinking in to fulfill an Eastern agenda. And he tries to actually be a Nigerian. I mean, in the real... <laughs>